Welcome to the live stream. My name is Chef Van der Berg. I'm here at the World Archery Excellence Center in Lausanne and I'm going to make a couple of arrows for you guys. So first off, um, I have this, uh, this arrow as an example. So I'm going to base my new arrows on the arrows that I already use. Um, for this, I always take off my knock and I use the length of the arrow with the pin to determine how much I need to cut off. So that means that the first step for me is gonna, putting on the pins on the new arrows. So that's step one. Always nice to have a nice fresh batch of arrows. So I'm gonna do three for you guys. So I'm gonna put the rest back. What spine are you using? I'm using uh, an Easton Extend 350 spine. So I'm gonna get my pins out. And make sure I have three. If you have any other questions, you can always ask me uh, during this live stream. I have this blower here. It's supposed to get very hot, so uh, I'm, I'll make sure not to touch it with my hands. Uh, I have a pair of pliers and some pins and some hot melt. And with this, I'm gonna make sure that everything is stuck together nicely. I'll wait for it to warm up a bit. So I just put a little, little bit of glue on there and then make sure that the glue is melted a bit and then slowly put it in the arrow in a twisting manner so there is glue on every side of the pin and then as soon as it's in just put it aside and let it dry there you'll do this with all your arrows of course It doesn't need to be super hot, it just needs to be just warm enough for the glue to melt. So if the if the glue that you're using is starting to get like bubbly, you're probably making it too warm and that might damage the carbon of the arrow if you're using carbon arrows. So put it in in a twisting manner. And for the last one, also make sure that if you're uh, grabbing a pin with pliers, don't squeeze down on it super hard because it's only aluminum and the pliers are mostly made of steel and you'll make some scratches or dents in them and they might not be good for your knock if you're using pins. Also, I forgot this, but you, normally if you're using hot melt and you need to put your hot melt away, you have something to put it on that doesn't melt or get stuck to the table. But in my case, the hot melt is now stuck to the table. So that is that. I have three pins now. I need to cool down a little bit, so I'm going to make sure that my my arrow cutter is the correct length 
So I have my old arrow. Uh, I took off the knock, so it's the same length as the arrows with the pin. And I'm gonna just make sure I line up the shaft with the saw blade. Do you use any particular brand of hot melt? Um, normally I use Eastern hot melt, um, but uh, in some cases, uh, if I'm on a competition and I don't have anything, uh, also the, the hot melt from uh, any convenience store or uh, like build where uh, stores is fine, as long as you uh, don't make it too warm and don't put too much on it. So this should be fine. Now the, the pins that I just put in, they should have been uh, cooled down a little, so I can now peel off the excess uh, hot melt. The longer you wait with this, the, the harder the hot melt gets and the easier it is to get it off, but since I'm doing a live stream for you guys, I can't wait for hours. Um, I'll do all three of them first. I take it off before I use the arrow cutter because the little ledge that it has to go on, um, it might just grab the, the hot melt and then your arrows are not cut straight. Also, when you're putting in your pins, if you use too much hot melt, the hot melt might end up on the shaft, the carbon shaft. And if it's too warm, it might damage it. So try to use exactly the right amount. So maybe only one drop of hot melt might be enough. So um, when I'm sawing my arrows, I use my thumb to keep it in the right place in the, in the end of the pin. And then I try to uh, rotate the arrow so everything is cut at the like slowly and not everything at once and uh, have a sloppy cut. So this one's cut. So after I've cut the arrows, I'm gonna maybe do more later. So I'm gonna leave the arrow cutter at the same position. Uh, I'm gonna put it away so I have more space. Um, I have a knife. It doesn't have to be a sharp knife. It can also be uh, like a simple blunt knife that you have laying around and that you don't uh, attach too much value to. Um, there's some, um, some uh, like, cut metal inside the arrow and you want to get rid of that. So by grabbing a knife and not cutting it hard, but just putting it in gently and rotating the arrow, you make sure that the point goes in easier than before. And then you shake it a bit so the stuff comes out again. I do this with all my arrows because if you don't do it, it might, like, your points might not go in as easy as you would like it to be. I now have three cut arrows, and the next step for me is to put some points in it. So. 
I use uh, 120 grain points uh, in case anybody was curious to that. Um, I have some 140 grain points, so I'm going to cut 20 grains off. And to do this, I have a plastic bag, which you might think is interesting, and some pliers. The plastic bag is so that if you're sitting in a room where you don't want your um, point weight to just fly away or your point to uh, go in a different direction, you can grab the point to wherever you want to cut it and then put it in the plastic bag. And if you cut it, it all stays in one place so it doesn't fly through the room. And you also have a nice way to uh, make sure your garbage, so to say, stays in the same place. After you've cut them, you can weigh them to see if they're if they're all the, the correct weight. But in my experience, if you cut them with a, with a set of pliers, they're like within the grain of each other. So, and now you have your uh, excess weight in one place. And you can throw it out later, or you can save it for maybe if you like to save stuff. Yeah, if you have like if you're a hoarder or something, and you really really like to have your uh, your excess weight from your points, so we're gonna do the same stuff again. Uh, we're gonna warm up the the heater. Uh, you can also do this with a blowtorch, but make sure you don't burn yourself, obviously. So I'm gonna turn that on. I'm in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, because we're uh, making some educational videos. I hope. Uh, for world archery and um, I'm having a good time. I'm at the, the World Archery Excellence Center which is a really nice location to uh, to come and shoot. This is what I meant with the uh, hot mount earlier. So I'm having a blast and uh, I really recommend people to also go here to train some or to just experience what it's like to uh, to train in a really really good environment. So again, on the points, you don't need to cover the whole point with glue. You just need like a couple drops of glue and you make sure that it's flowing so that it's not hardened out again. And then you twist it on like so. And that's your point in. So we'll let that cool down again. I used to, or I always put my arrow in my armpit so I know where it is and for me that's the, the best place to hold it so I can easily access it. Once again, you, you make the points hot but you don't need to make them like glowing hot. They, they don't need to uh, be red hot. It's just so that the glue keeps sticking to it and Um, that's a good question. If you uh, if you glue your points, you can also do it, especially with a blowtorch. You can um, you can hold it in your hand, and if you cannot hold the tip of the point anymore, uh, it's probably also too hot for the carbon. But because I'm using uh, a hot air gun instead of um, a blowtorch, it's really difficult to determine where it's hot and where it's not hot. So I I use my, my pliers now. Normally. I um, I use a blowtorch and I just hold the point in my hand and if I can't hold the point anymore I just put it away and I try again later and then I get another point out and normally that's about eight seconds of holding it in the flame so the, the point really doesn't need to be that hot it's more that the glue if you can melt the glue um, that's all, all you need to do so but the, the reason you, you make the point hot is for me at least because if you use a cold point it doesn't, the glue doesn't stick to the point so much so you just, yeah.
Sorry? I think the center is open for archers. I think, uh, but you might want to fill me in on that. I'm with uh, the guys from World Archery right now, so uh, I think you can just uh, pay a certain amount uh, and make sure, or you get, you get to train here and you get to use all of their facilities. And I'm not sure about pricing, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere on the website of World Archery. I wouldn't say it's bad, uh, but it's not necessary either. So uh, it's it's not it's not bad to uh, to cool the, the the shaft after you've put put the point in. But uh, I don't do it because I have the patience to wait for it to cool down. And um, in in my ex like in in my knowledge, uh, if you cool down a metal rapidly, it becomes brittle, and you don't want that with your uh, your inside of your shaft. So. This one is almost cooled down, so I can take off the hot melt again. And then after I've put, or I've taken the hot melt off, obviously what's missing on the arrow is some veins, some feathers. So I'm gonna put those on after. And I'm going to do that by first putting on a set of custom-made arrow reps. Uh, I think it's the easiest way because it's a nice, uh, it's a nice sticker. It has some lines on it that you can uh, put your veins on. And you always know that your veins are distributed over the arrow uh, in an even way. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Actually, I did forget something. I forgot uh, stuff uh, to make the arrows uh, or to degrease the arrows. But, what do you mean? Uh, you have some acetone. So first, I'm going to explain how I uh, position my reps. So I have um, I have my reps a little bit from the center or from the end of the arrow. This is because I like to be able to see. Uh, I like to be able to see if uh, there is a crack in my arrow after I've hit the knock or uh, just it, it's nice to be able to see the end of the arrow to, to check for damages. So uh, I've determined uh, a, certain, um, a certain distance and I'm going to, because I don't have my mat with me, normally I use a, a mat that has the, the sizes on it, so I'm going to go to the first stripe and then I'm gonna put a stripe right where I want the wraps to be so that's around there and I take my wraps So in a packet of reps, there is 32 reps, and I only need three now, so I'm going to cut off three. Uh, and now <laughs> I'll have to wait for the acetone that I forgot to put on the table. So if you have any questions, I guess you can ask them now. If somebody could read them up to me. What type of veins do you use? I use uh, 50 millimeter XS wings. Uh, medium profile. My lovely assistant is bringing me some acetone. Thank you. So, 
So child's look. It's my eternal enemy. I do, in fact, make all my arrows myself, yeah. Or at least I assemble them myself. I don't make them myself. Do you make other people's arrows as well? I used to make other people's arrows in the past because I have worked in an archery shop in the Netherlands. But these days, uh, I don't do that anymore. And I only make my own ones. Um, well, you can imagine if you if you have to throw uh, two different weights of balls uh, in a certain direction, the one is going to go further than the other, and it's the same with arrows. Really, uh, it's it's critical to have everything the same in archery because that's what you aspire to to have. So, in your shot, you want everything to be the same. So, why not in your equipment? I use the tungsten points. Uh, my draw weight is currently, uh, I think, 53 and a half pounds on the fingers. Uh, I get that by uh, drawing about 31 and a half inches with 46 pound limbs. So I overdraw my bow. Um, and the heaviest I've shot uh, has been in 2015, I think. Uh, there was a period of time that I shot 57 pounds. But it wasn't uh, necessarily hard on the shoulders, but more on the fingers. So I couldn't keep up with that with my fingers. So now I've, I've put a stripe on the note block that I have here. Um, and I just told you that I have a certain amount of uh, distance between the pin and the, and the wrap. So I'm going to use the stripe on the notepad to just position the wrap exactly the same as the other one. You want to make sure that the wrap is on there straight. You roll it on and take off the application fo foil. And like so, there's a wrap on my arrow. And I'm really content with how straight it is. So, so I'll repeat this two other times. I have number one, two, three, and four, so I'm going to do one, two, and three, because if I put four on there, my OCD is going crazy. So the nice thing about these wraps is that they have application foil, which means that uh, you can take it off with the foil, and you don't have to damage the wrap with, uh, with anything to put it on the paper you have. My total arrow weight, the last time I checked, but I've changed a couple things since then. Last time I checked, it was about 410 grains. So if you roll on your rep, you have uh, the end of the rep, of course. It overlaps the beginning of the rep. Um, always when I put my rep on, I like to press on it with my thumb to make sure it's uh, it's all good and secure. And the last one for now. Perfect. So, oh, I did this wrong. <laughs> I put my wrap on the other way. So, I'll need to take it off now. <laughs> Are you taking it off? Uh, I'm, I'm taking off my wrap just by, uh, since it's freshly on there, it's, it's still, you're still able to take it off, and I'm just going to scratch it off with my thumb. Then I have to clean it again and put a new one on. Um, 
the nice thing about wraps, especially for recurve archers, but also for compound archers, is because the, the veins will stick better to the shaft than without a wrap. And um, you can have lines on them that make it easier to make sure your veins are evenly distributed over the shaft. So that's, uh, that's one of the biggest advantages. So in, in, in recurve terms, that means that you don't have to put stripes on your arrows before you put the veins on anymore. I'm using uh, custom made wraps by Sox. Doing a live stream makes everything very real all of a sudden. If you make a mistake, you have to fix it on the spot. So these wraps, I, I can now still take them off. Uh, after they've been there for about 24 hour or hours, they're almost completely stuck. So it's very difficult to take them off. Uh, you can take them off by putting them in boiling water. That's a good way to do that. Or um, uh, just by gently doing it with a lot of patience. So. How do you make that throw with your bar sometimes before it hits the fence? Uh, it's just instinct, it's all instinct. Um, the moment I throw my bow um, is mostly uh, the result of my side pin not being in the middle while I release, or when I release. And normally I'm, I'm correcting my shots during, during the aiming, but if the tension of the, of the bow, like the, the 54 pounds that I, that I shoot, if that just suddenly goes away, I have all the room to, to move my bow. Um, and that's usually what happens. So it's, it's more so that the, the aiming movement is easier when there's not uh, 54 pounds of weight on your fingers. Does it matter that the wraps increase the weight of your arrow? Uh, I don't believe that it matters that my arrow gets heavier from the, from the wrap. I think it's only a couple grains as well. And yeah, for, for me, I haven't noticed any difference. I, I've shot them with and without reps uh, through each other, and I don't think it's any, it, it makes any difference for me. So that's that. I now have reps on it. So I'll have to do the veins now. I have three arrows, so I'll need nine veins. So Zachariah is asking uh, what fine arrows are going to be using. Um, I, I still use. Uh, extend 350 so it's a barrel shaft so effectively uh, that means that for a parallel shaft that would be uh, somewhere just under 400 spine so I have my veins here and I have these tapes they're double sided so I'm just gonna take one and put the vein on the double sided tape. And Mark, who I think you know, is asking did you try four paint uh, veins for arrows at all? Um, I didn't use four veins on an arrow before because I feel like my arrows have enough drag already. Um, and four veins would just make it more um, like the wind would, would make the arrow just not hit the middle more, I feel. So I have one vein here. I'm just going to put it on straight away. Um, there's multiple tactics of doing this. You can uh, either like make sure all your veins have tape, or you can just grab a vein and put it on there. Uh, that's what I like to do. Uh, I have one line on my wrap, which makes it very easy. Um, normally, you have one line, and you have some lines uh, as an offset. Um, so for me, it's just a matter, or uh, yeah, it's just a case of putting the vein exactly on the line. Uh, 
uh, any glue that your shop recommends. So um, there's a lot of different uh, glues for veins. I would use a glue that stays flexible after it dries out. So if you use a glue that hardens, uh, you'll have a chance of uh, the veins just simply breaking off the arrow. So a good glue that has a good adhesive uh, power and uh, that stays flexible so it can take a, take a beating. Why don't you put the tape on the car instead of the vein? Um, I think it's just habit uh, that I put my tape on the vein instead of on the shaft. So the first time I, I put my, my veins on my arrow that somebody taught it to me is to put it or to do it this way. Um, and it stuck with me and I've always done it like this. I've been shooting for 18 years now, so I was four years old when I started shooting. How often do you replace everything on your arrows, or how often do you replace your arrows? Uh, I replace my arrows a couple times a year, um, because I shoot a lot, and in the Netherlands we have a lot of straw that, that we shoot at, so the arrows, they, they wear really fast. Um, and then my, my veins, I change maybe once every two weeks uh, just because I want to have my veins in, in top shape for competitions. Uh, for the rest, the, the other components, the pins I'll change when, when they're busted. When I, when I break a knock and, and the pin is, is damaged, when there's a dent in it, uh, I'll change it. When there's a crack in it, I'll change it. And the points, the points they, they last forever. If you don't hit anything that's harder than, uh, than yeah. And the target you can do forever with your uh, with your tungsten points. So now I have three veins on here, uh, which means I'll have to do the end and the beginning. Eighteen meters or eighteen? Uh, I think I could hit a strobe a strobe waffle at at eighteen meters, but consistently is a uh, is a good question. But I, I could definitely do it in two or three tries. Why do you use tape and not glue? I use tape because it's uh, less permanent. Um, if you glue your veins onto your shaft, uh, when you break one, you have to clean the shaft and do everything. Uh, you start, you have to start all over, and especially with the wraps that I'm using, you have to, um, you have to really. Uh, take the wrap off and, and have to do all of the process again. With the tape you can simply replace one vein and that makes uh, a lot of difference in the amount of veins that I use. How many times have a start you just pop and tail? Sorry? Top and tail tape? How many oh. uh, my, my top and tail tape I do it like two and a half times around the shaft and then um, I don't break it or I don't cut it off but I, I break it off by uh, putting tension on it as far as it will go so like like so and that means that the end is really secure and it, it will tighten up really nicely so this is the first arrow like basically done it still needs a knock but I'll do that later and I'll do the rest now Um, I've recently changed from 325s to 350s. Um, that's the spine of my arrow. And that means that right now I only have uh, one set ready to shoot uh, at the moment. But normally when I go to a competition, I always make sure I have 24 uh, ready to go arrows. Uh, I use uh, 24 strands of 8190 material and I use uh, 0 0.018 uh, serving thread and yes, my, uh, my biter uh, size 1 Nox fitted. I like how technical all the questions are. Yeah, I, I could do with a more with more scope waffle questions or food in general, like my favorite food.
I don't have an, an answer for that yet, but there's a lot of questions you can ask. It doesn't have to be related to the arrows. As you can see, I'm not the fastest uh, arrow builder in the world, but I like to take my time and make sure that everything is on there as precise as possible. I always, when I, when I put my veins on, I always make sure that I have a little bit of extra tape on every end of the vein. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's true or not, but I feel like uh, the, the top and tail tape uh, of the vein just it, it makes more sense that way. So it, it covers more uh, stickiness, so it, it will stick better in the end. And I don't know if that's a gut feel or if that's like really true, but for me it works. So. Uh, what brand of eyewear do you use to shoot the um, When I use sunglasses outside, when it's uh, when it's bright out, I use Bolle, which is a, a brand that does uh, security or safety glasses, but also uh, sunglasses, and they I think they're pretty big in uh, in skiing and and winter sports. Um, and I like them because I can shoot with them. So if I if I put on a normal sets or a normal pair of sunglasses, I don't see anything because I look against the frame. Uh, and with the glasses that I use during shooting, I can uh, I don't have a frame to put on my nose, so that makes it possible for me to shoot with a set of sunglasses. That's a good question. The, the, the best hamburger that I've had, and I, I might get some uh, controversy about this, but the, the best hamburger for me that I've had was at the Red Robin in uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. That's uh, still my, my top hamburger on the list of hamburgers. Um, my favorite final venue is, uh, I think, the current venue in Shanghai, uh, w like in the middle of the park between all the, the nice financial uh, buildings. That has to be the, the nicest final venue that I've been at, at least. Um, for the rest, I, yeah, uh, pretty much all of the, the fields that I have been at for a World Cup are, are good, are sufficient. Uh, I've tested quite a bit of wings and um, I choose based on group and then after that if, if I notice that the groups might be the same when I use different kinds of veins, I uh, look at durability and see uh, how many times a week or how many times a month I have to refletch. And uh, for now for me these 50 mil uh, excess wings they come out the test the best. Uh, in terms of grouping. That's a hard no. That should be uh, illegal. That was about pineapple on pizza. If you didn't, if you didn't hear that. Yeah, so um, you can still see it uh, right here. I have uh, some some lines on my wraps, um, and the the tape that I put or the, the the sticker that I put on my on my arrow is called a wrap. Um, in their system, they uh, they calculate for every single arrow that is out there, basically that that gets produced. They calculate how much space there should be between the veins. And they put a line on, on like 120 degrees and I put it there. Uh, the angle for me is 2 degrees because I've tested uh, multiple or different uh, angles. And for me, this worked the best. This is the, the, the best amount of drag and uh, yeah, the nicest, uh, nicest groupings. So I have lines on my, on my arrows and the angle is just a matter of testing it a lot. Uh, 
if you don't have reps, you, uh, I know that Bider has a system for it. So this is a, a system that Bider made. I think you put an arrow in here with a knock or without a knock. I'm not complete. Oh, with a knock. You put an arrow in there and then you put these three little poles against the arrow and then you can uh, mark your arrow in between those poles. And then you've also ha you also have a, a, a nice uh, way of distributing your veins. Um, but then again, uh, like, I said, like I said before, uh, if you use a wrap, uh, your veins usually stick better to the shaft than without a wrap. Uh, I do listen to music. Uh, the bands differ for uh, who I'm training with. So in the, in our national team, we have a list of music that everybody has uh, his own uh, music in. But when when I get to choose, um, it's it's got to be Metallica or ACDC, a bit of Deep Purple. Uh, Mostly classic rock is, is my my kind of music. I'm trying to stop nail biting, but I still don't have enough nails for fletching. So if you put your end tape or your tail tape, whatever you like to call it, on there, you put a little bit of tension on it, not a lot, but just try to hold a little bit of tension on it and then it keeps or it stays in its place better. And that way you'll get a like more sturdy uh, construction of your veins on your arrow. So after I fletched my three arrows, the only thing it needs now is knocks. And I have some right here. I use the Bider pin knock, the size one asymmetrical. So I have three of them here. These are the clear ones. Uh, my girlfriend put them on the table, so I suppose they were the closest to uh, what she was looking at. And then When I put them on, I try to make a, a Y shape, sort of. So I like you used to, or you 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 learn to put one odd vein to the left um, with uh, spinning veins, or like these veins. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, it all depends on the clearance that you get with your arrow. And you can check the clearance that you get. Like, this is a good example of the the odd vein uh, sticking out exactly to the left. And uh, with my arrow, I have it more like this. So this is how you're. This is how you're <coughs> taught to do it. And my arrows are more something like this. And this is because of the clearance. So you can easily check your clearance uh, that you get with your arrow and your uh, your bow by putting some dry shampoo or some powder on your riser. Um, and if you shoot it and you see any marks of the arrow passing it, it means that you hit your riser and you might want to change your tuning a bit. But uh, what to change on your tuning is uh, it's very experimental. It can can be anything. And that's it. That's three complete arrows done. So we've got a couple, a couple more questions just for yourself. Yeah. Um, we 
which eye is your, is your dominant one? My dominant eye is my right eye. Uh, I don't powder my veins, I just uh, have patience and I wait until they're uh, greasy enough or, or whatever that they don't stick to each other anymore. How long do you leave an hour before you treat them? Like after, after making it? Uh, I, like this, this arrow is now ready to go, I don't, I don't wait until it's uh, done or something. I have shot 70 meters with the 2315s. Um, it's difficult, but I managed to squeeze a 59 out uh, in, in that afternoon that I tried. But uh, I wouldn't recommend it if you're uh, planning on being a like, international competitive archer. Have you ever shot compound? Uh, I actually shoot compound about once a week. Uh, I feel like it's a good exercise for my shoulders because it's like just different muscles that I use with my recurve and it's a good aiming exercise because you're so aware of where you're aiming that uh, it's completely different to recurve where you're trying to aim in the middle but it doesn't have to be exactly on the x-ray. With compound where, wherever you're aiming and you're, if your sh shot execution is good you'll hit where you're aiming so that's why I like to uh, why I like to shoot compound. It's more like an exercise for my recurve shooting. Are you going to do the other nine arrows? I am going to do the other nine arrows, but I figured that if I uh, had to do them on the live stream, that would take too much time. Uh, three more questions. Any tips for shooting in the wind? Tips for shooting in the wind is to uh, accept that it's windy um, and uh, to not get super mad when you don't hit the middle anymore or uh, when you don't hit the middle as much as you are used to and um, try to let the wind move you about so don't try to fight it too much because that will only make it worse. How many arrows do you shoot a day? Uh, at the moment I shoot about on average about 200 or 250 arrows a day. Uh, the secret to good shooting is to have fun and to keep having fun while you're shooting because that makes all the difference in motivation and uh, it will just make sure that you'll stay in the sport as long as, uh, as you want. Well, thank you for watching. Um, I've ha I have three arrows more and I hope you have some more knowledge right now. Um, I hope to see you again on, the, on another live stream and uh, make sure to follow this page. See you, bye.